Put yourself in the frame with Speaker Spotlight. Today we're looking at a brand new feature in Google Slides. Announced in February and rolling out to an interface near you from last week. Today, let's take a look at the Speaker Spotlight function. What is Speaker Spotlight? Speaker Spotlight allows a presenter's video feed to be visible to the audience when a slide is in slideshow mode. Video feeds can be framed in one of 14 default shapes or combined with the mask function to access a wider range of frames. Speaker spotlights can be added to all slides or specific slides as chosen by the slide editor. Once inserted, an editor can avail of the format options menu for the shape in order to resize, rotate, position and add drop shadow. A speaker spotlight can be animated, allowing the presenter to introduce the spotlight in a timely and engaging way. So let's take a look at how it works. From the Google Slides toolbar, access the speaker spotlight icon. Choose a spotlight shape to frame your video feed. For this video, I've chosen a square. I can change the shape by accessing the speaker spotlight icon again and choosing to insert a new spotlight. Alternatively, I can click on the spotlight and access the mask icon, which appears in the toolbar. You can see here I now have a choice from all of the usual mask shapes, arrows and cutouts that you would usually see for image masking in slides. To position my spotlight, I can simply drag the shape to an appropriate position in the slide, or I can use the Format Options menu to place the shape in a specific position using X and Y coordinates. Bear in mind that the spotlight may naturally sit in different positions on the slide, depending on the supporting content already existing in the slide. Is my spotlight the right size? I can change the spotlight size here in the Format Options menu by adjusting the height and the width separately. Or I can lock up the aspect ratio and scale up or down with the percentage toggle. Alternatively, I can resize the shape by clicking and dragging the corners. And I can increase the corner rounding here. Does my frame need a border? From the toolbar, I can add a color border. I can change the border weight. And I can choose a solid or a dashed line to outline my video feed. Lastly, from the format option menu, I can add a drop shadow to give my feed some depth. Now that the shape is fully formatted, it can be added to other slides. Quickly add to all slides from the right click menu here. Or simply cut and paste into the slides which require a spotlight. Of course, once we have added our spotlight to the presentation, the first application that you may imagine is to use it in a remote meeting. Adding a spotlight allows the presenter's video feed to appear in the presented slides. Whilst the speaker spotlight is in use, the video feed to the presenter's tile is turned off. We trial the speaker spotlight in a meet presentation using the co-presenter controls. As the speaker spotlight takes the video feed from the user who is presenting the tab, our recommendation of using the co-presenting feature is to turn off speaker spotlight. You might consider using the speaker spotlight when presenting to a larger audience or in a venue with poorer sight lines. 
Incorporating your video feed into the slides allows the whole audience to see the speaker's facial expressions when presenting. The obvious watch point here is that you will need to present from one position in order to be picked up by your camera. Lastly, you might incorporate the speaker spotlight function when making slide recordings. As we covered in our video back at the start of February, it is now possible to record your slides for asynchronous delivery. While the recording function does give options for speaker view in the video, we find the default shapes, sizes and positions are limited. If you instead use the speaker spotlight function, this gives you much more customization for the presenter view in the recording. When you use a speaker spotlight in your presentation, it will replace the default presenter view when recording. This can be helpful with positioning your presenter in relation to slide content, which when working in the default, you have to reposition as you present. When testing this feature, we found that during the recording, say slide without a speaker spotlight, the recording function forced a presenter bubble to the side of the presentation. We felt this really took us out of the presentation a little, so we would recommend that when using the speaker spotlight function in a recording, apply it to all slides. So there you have it, a nifty little feature that allows you to insert yourself into your presentations and really enhance your hybrid or remote me. Pair speaker spotlight with the new functionality for recording presentations and you can really create some dynamic and human-centered asynchronous resources. If you want to unlock more functionality in your Google workspace, get in touch with the team today to talk about some of our learning services. And until next week, See you then.